Hello, welcome to this lesson in AC analysis. Notice we have the exact same equation on the board that we've left for the last several sections. We're going to leave it there for a little while longer. Um, and this is the instantaneous power. Uh, we've been talking about it over and over again. And we've talked about the resistive case when this phase angle, theta v minus theta i, is zero. We've talked about the inductive case where theta v minus theta i is going to be uh, plus 90, and then we've talked about the uh, capacitive case where theta v minus theta i is going to be negative 90. And we've kind of looked at each of those cases individually, and I hope you have a pretty good understanding of what that would look like, what the plot of this instantaneous power would look like for those cases. So we've spent a lot of time on that, so make sure you've already looked at that. Now we're going to combine it all together. In the real world, you don't just have a, a resistive load or just an inductive load or just a capacitive load. Every load in real life is going to have a resistive component, an inductive component, and a capacitive component in general. Okay, So what is it really going to look like when we put all of these things together? What's the real part going to look like? What's the reactive part going to look like? So what I'm going to do is review just a, a, some, some of the conclusions that we've done really fast, bullet proof, bullet, bullet points, and then we're going to introduce um, the concept of Q, and then I'll give you the grand finale, which will be really good for you because I think you'll see how it all fits together. I've kind of been building up to this, so this is really exciting for me because I can finally tie it all together for you, or at least try to. So let's go back and recall just a couple of quick things, uh, all directly related to this giant equation that we've left on the board here. So recall, um, average power, the average power is when we take this instantaneous power, we integrate it over a period um, and then divide it by the period. So we're taking an average. And we said that when we do that, these two terms drop away because, because of these guys. When you integrate these guys over a period, the integration of them drop away because you're, you're integrating on the plus and on the negative side of the swing. So they all basically dis disappear. So the average power um, for any load is just the first term. Okay, and we called that before, we called that capital P, right, capital P, and we basically said it's equal to the first term. So Vm, Im, so the amplitudes multiplied together, divided by 2 times the cosine of theta V minus theta I. This is stuff, this is something we talked about before. So if we average this over a period, these terms drop away, we're only left with this. This is what we called the average power. So that's a recall. We're going to use this in a second. That's why I'm having this uh, defined again for you. Now we want to define something to make things a little bit easier. We're going to define what the reactive power, which we've talked about, but we're now we're going to label it with a variable. We're going to call it Q, okay? Q, and we're going to we're going to define it as the coefficient of the third term. So whereas the average power is capital P, and that ends up being just the first term, we're going to define the reactive power. The reactive power is what we've been talking about for capacitors and inductors this whole time. I've been you know, mentioning the term reactive power. Now we're going to put a variable name to it. We're going to call it Q. Q is always from now on going to represent reactive power. So when you see Q, you need to start thinking about the capacitive or inductive load out there. We're going to call Q. We're going to define it to be the coefficient of the third term here the coefficient of the third term. And the reason we're defining it to be that coefficient of the third term, let me actually write it down before I tell you why we're, why we're doing that. So Q is going to be defined to be, now we're going to take away the negative sign for now, you'll see why, but it's going to be the, co this co when I say the coefficient, I'm talking about all of this 